Have you ever wondered how just a small vibration in the air can turn into music, speech, or even the sound of your own heartbeat? Our ear is one of the most fascinating organs of the human body. It is not only responsible for hearing, but also for maintaining our balance. In this video, we will explore the external ear, the middle ear, and the internal ear. By the end of this video, you will know exactly how your ear works like a tiny but powerful machine. Let us begin with the external ear. This is the part you can actually see outside your head. The external ear has three main parts, the pinna or auricle, the ear canal, and the eardrum or tympanic membrane. The pinna is the visible, curved, and flexible flap made of cartilage and skin. Its job is simple, but very important. It collects sound waves from the environment and directs them into the ear canal. The ear canal, also called the external auditory canal, is a tube-like passage about 2.5 centimeters long. This canal not only guides sound to the eardrum, but also produces earwax, or cerumen, which protects the ear by trapping dust and microbes. At the end of the canal lies the eardrum, a thin and tightly stretched membrane. When sound waves hit the eardrum, it vibrates like a drum skin. These vibrations are the first step in the magical process of hearing. Now, let us understand the functions of the external ear. The pinna acts like a satellite dish, collecting sound waves and helping us identify the direction from where the sound is coming. The ridges and curves of the pinna filter sounds and make it easier to understand voices in noisy places. The ear canal amplifies certain frequencies of sound, making speech clearer. It also protects the eardrum from sudden pressure changes. The earwax acts like a natural cleaner and antibacterial shield. Finally, the eardrum transforms sound energy into mechanical vibrations. Without the external ear, sounds would be weak, unclear, and directionless. So even though it looks simple, the external ear plays a very smart role in hearing. Next, we move deeper inside to the middle ear. The middle ear is a small air-filled space behind the eardrum. Its main components are three tiny bones called ossicles, the eustachian tube, and some protective muscles. The ossicles are the smallest bones in the human body, and they work together like a chain. These bones are called the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. The malleus is attached to the eardrum. The incus connects the malleus and stapes, and the stapes touches the inner ear at a small window called the oval window. Along with them, the middle ear has the eustachian tube, which connects the ear to the back of the throat. The middle ear has very interesting functions. When the eardrum vibrates, the malleus picks up those vibrations and passes them to the incus. The incus then transfers them to the stapes. The stapes pushes these vibrations into the oval window of the inner ear. The eustachian tube balances air pressure on both sides of the eardrum. For example, when you travel in an airplane and your ears pop, it is the eustachian tube equalizing pressure. This reflex protects the delicate inner ear from damage. So, the middle ear acts like a bridge, amplifier, and protector at the same time. Now we have reached the most complex and fascinating part, the internal ear, also known as the inner ear or the labyrinth. This part is located deep inside the skull. 
The internal ear has two main divisions, the cochlea, which is responsible for hearing, and the vestibular system, which controls balance. The cochlea looks like a snail shell and has three fluid-filled chambers. Inside the cochlea lies the organ of cordy, which contains thousands of hair cells. These are the actual sensory cells of hearing. The vestibular system is made of three semicircular canals, the utricle and the saccule. These structures detect movement, gravity, and body position. Let us first look at the cochlea in more detail. The cochlea has three chambers, the scala vestibuli, scala media, and scala tympani. When the stapes pushes on the oval window, it creates fluid waves inside the cochlea. These waves move through the chambers and cause the basilar membrane to vibrate. Different parts of the basilar membrane respond to different sound frequencies. High pitch sounds near the base and low pitch sounds near the apex. On top of this membrane is the organ of corti. The hair cells here convert mechanical vibrations into electrical signals. These signals are carried by the auditory nerve, also called the cochlear nerve, to the brain. The brain then interprets them as sounds. This is how we can enjoy music, understand speech, or hear the rustling of leaves. Now let us move to the vestibular system, which is equally important. The semicircular canals are three loop-shaped tubes arranged at right angles to each other. They detect rotational movements of the head, such as turning left, right, up, or down. The utricle and saccule detect linear movements in gravity, such as moving forward, backward, or standing still. Inside these organs are tiny crystals called otoliths that move with head motion. The hair cells in the vestibular system send signals to the brain whenever the head changes position. The brain then coordinates these signals with the eyes and muscles to keep balance and posture. That is why, when the inner ear is disturbed, a person feels dizziness or vertigo. This system is like a natural gyroscope inside our body. The ear does not work alone. The cochlear nerve and the vestibular nerve join together to form the vestibulocochlear nerve, also called cranial nerve 8. This nerve carries information from both the cochlea and the vestibular system to the brain. The brainstem processes these signals and sends them to different brain areas. The auditory cortex in the temporal lobe interprets sounds, while other regions coordinate balance. So, the human ear is not just an organ of hearing, but also of orientation. Together, the external, middle, and internal ear convert invisible sound waves into meaningful messages and keep us balanced on our feet. The ear is truly a masterpiece of biology, a natural machine of sound and balance. Next time you hear something, remember the complex journey of vibrations that made it possible. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.